What's going on guys, Billy here, and Tesla's energy app has been long overdue for an upgrade. For the longest time, when you opened up that app, it showed you your energy usage over a 5, 15, or 30 mile distance. It showed you your average watt hours per mile usage and projected range, but compared to the data that some other EVs are showing their drivers, it makes the screen look very basic. Luckily, Tesla's rolled out an update that introduces two new tabs, Drive and Park, that give you way more insight as to how you're using energy. This is going to be an absolute lifesaver as we move into the colder months here in Philadelphia, as I'm going to be using the heater more and just with those cold temperatures, it really does affect the battery as well as the range. So jumping into the drive section of the energy app, starting in the top right, we have the option to look at the statistics below over the duration of our trip or based on the rated efficiency of the vehicle. Now running down the screen here from the top to the bottom, we first have our total energy used, which in the case of my trip here was 6.3%. And based on what my car estimated, I used 0.3% more than that projection. That percentage is basically your overall usage. And then these sections underneath break that consumption down even further. This middle section here is a graph with the y-axis showing battery percentage over the miles driven along the x-axis. Over your distance traveled, you can see at which points you were staying within the estimated efficiency of your car, highlighted in green, and at which points you may have been overusing energy, which is shown in yellow. My favorite thing about this middle section of information is the live range estimation, which shows you down to the decimal what your estimated battery at arrival will be. Now that estimation isn't as helpful if you're, say, just driving around town. I mean, what's the difference between 80% and 79%. There have been times though where I push my car on road trips and pull into the supercharger with like one to 2% battery remaining. So having that extra breakdown to see that, oh, I'll still have a half a percent when I get to my destination is comforting. In general, this live update is key for the times where you're running low on battery trying to get somewhere. Now where things really get broken down is at the bottom section of the drive tab here in the new energy app where it actually breaks up your energy usage based on category and shows you in which category you might be over or under using energy. So these categories are broken down by driving, climate, battery conditioning, elevation, and then everything else. That overall consumption at the top displayed as a percentage is then further broken down into each of these categories. So you can see where that energy actually went. For example, of the 6.3% of my battery that I used along this trip, 6% went to driving, 0.1% went to the climate. I didn't use any energy conditioning the battery. I used 0.1% on traversing different elevations, and then everything else in my car used the final 0.2%. That everything else section includes all the other functions of your vehicle, like the infotainment system, the audio system, the onboard computers, charging your phones, or really anything else that could draw power from the battery is displayed down there in that everything else section. But it's really great to see that all of the other categories are displayed, kind of the areas that are a little bit more power hungry. So like the climate and the driving is what's gonna use most of your power. And it's great to see all that broken down by category. Now next to each category, it also breaks down your energy usage in each category based off of the projection. So you can see if you're overusing energy energy in a specific way, or if you're saving energy by doing something specific. Like you'll see that I actually kind of balanced myself out here between the driving and climate. I used 0.5% more energy than expected because I was driving faster late at night on the highway, but it was actually pretty nice outside. So I just left the climate off. Therefore it saved me some energy. Your climate usage is always something that you kind of had to estimate based on the tools that you were given. So for example, I would always try to monitor my watt hours per mile, or sometimes I would try to look at like my estimated battery at arrival and see if that was dropping because, hey, I might be using the heater too much or like my temperature might be too high or maybe I've got people in the back seat and now the blowers need to blow air through those vents as well. So it was always a guessing game that I had to play and sometimes it left me in a bad spot where I wasn't paying attention and I realized I was overusing energy and then I had to say stop or pull over or charge my car. So again, overall, it's really great to see that they've broken this up into categories so that we know as drivers where our energy is going. Now, the final section here on the screen within the drive tab is an area where range tips are displayed. In this example, my car is telling me that driving slower below 70 miles an hour would have saved me 0.8% of range and that low tire pressure due to the cold weather cost me 0.1%. I've seen a variety of different tips pop up amongst my drive time and I thought at first they would have been those corny generic warnings like drive slower or stop using the heat or air conditioner, but I think it's actually really impressive that they tell you exactly how much energy you could have saved. That right there is super powerful. I can't wait to utilize this on a longer trip to see how I could potentially drive further between superchargers rather than having to stop frequently because I'm overusing energy.
Now up at the top here, you can switch this data to be shown compared to the rated efficiency of your car, which in this case, I used a lot more energy than what Tesla has rated my vehicle for, which is a Model Y performance. This of course isn't set for a real world use case though. Like in this scenario, I was doing 80 miles an hour on the highway, whereas Tesla is basing their ratings off of optimal driving with the best conditions. Within this view, you can also switch between looking at the current drive that you're on, or you can see your entire day's worth of driving since you last charged. This will really give you an overarching view into how you use your energy throughout the day. Like in this case, you can tell that I have a case of lead foot because I'm using 5% more energy in the driving section than what my car is rated for. This means that with my car at 39%, if I just drove like a normal human being, it would actually be at around 44%, which is a pretty substantial difference. Overall, between both views, this is a great screen to look at though, to see how you might be able to better tweak your energy usage to get closer to what the car is rated for. This will help you get the maximum range from your car, but I think Think that the trip view is personally better to look at and monitor on the regular as you're driving because it takes everything into account like the elevation change, the temperature, your driving habits, and plenty of other factors to give you an accurate estimate of how much energy that you're going to be using and what battery percentage level you'll arrive with at your destination. So all that information added in the drive section is awesome and it's really going to help me now as I said moving into the cold months as I like to keep my car nice and toasty and it's going to be able to tell me if I'm overusing my climate which I usually do. Now moving on to the park menu, this is another tab that provides great insight as to how you use your energy in the battery when the car isn't moving. Your car will monitor energy usage while the car is idle and break that usage up into seven different categories. Screen time, preconditioning, cabin overheat protection, sentry mode, the mobile app, summon standby, and vehicle standby. In the case of my idle usage for this particular day, my biggest uses were through screen time, preconditioning, and sentry mode. The screen time category here is really where most of your usage will fall for a majority of the energy usage. Things like media, entertainment, climate control, phone charging, and the screen itself will all fall into this category, while the others are fairly self-explanatory. It also shows some tips to help you reduce usage in specific areas, like here for sentry mode, which I pretty much have on at all times, no matter where I am with my car. I live in an apartment, so when it's in the garage or out in the parking lot, I like to make sure the cameras are on and rolling. A question that I've always had is how much energy do I use on the daily with cabin overheat protection turned on? And while I really can't test it out right now because it's like 40 degrees outside, it will be cool during those summer days when it gets up to like 100 degrees to see exactly how much energy is being used to keep my car cool throughout the day. Now, the final tab within the energy app we already saw is the consumption section, which we're already very familiar with because it's been in Tesla's vehicles for years. And remember, for the longest time, it was the only way that you could view how much energy you were using. You can flip between your usage over 5, 15, and 30 miles, and you can see your estimated range displayed as an average or what your instant range would be with your current usage in that moment. For me, the live projection under the drive tab is way more accurate and updates more frequently based on your actual usage. So overall, I think that the energy app is way more useful now. I think it's going to be great for those purchasing a Tesla for their first time, purchasing their first electric vehicle to understand how the energy is used. It'll help them kind of curb their range anxiety in a sense. But as a power user like myself, being able to use this on the daily to see how my energy is being used is going to be great. I mean, I drive hundreds of miles a day for work. So being able to see like how I can potentially get better range from my car in specific scenarios is going to be awesome as it's broken down by category. Now, I do think that Tesla still has a little bit more work to go or a little bit more work to do here on this energy section. Like I wish I had different views of how my energy was used, like say throughout a 24 hour period or even a week long, like a seven day long period. I really like the iPhone's battery health section, and I think that if they could implement this same exact view, it would be great, especially for road trips. Like, I've got a drive coming up to Texas, and I would love to see my efficiency for the entire day. Like, oh, I used a total of 40% more energy because I drove too fast over the course of 600 miles. That's some information that'd be really great to look at because in between charging stops, I now can only see like my previous 170 to 200 miles. So this is by far one of my favorite updates I've received for the Model Y since I purchased it back in 2021, early 2021, because this is going to have a real impact on my day to day driving. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any thoughts or comments down the section below, the comment section below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.